If you think the learning stops there, there's more part two. So they've introduced the faculty of agriculture and veterinarians. So today we're headed to the Edna University Course Farm property to learn more about agriculture in Somaliland. Different kind of farm tour, more like a homework session on 24 acres of farmland. The Edna Adden University Faculty of Agriculture has three farm properties that are dedicated to the practical studies of this course. So join us today. We'll join Dr. Okolo and Ilias who teach teaches the practical sessions on the farm. This study session is spread across three farms. One is a livestock farm, one is a vegetable farm, and then we have the fruit farm. So join us on this beautiful episode where we get to learn a lot about how we can benefit our land through the field of agriculture. <laughs> They're really ready to go. <laughs> I want to introduce Professor Okolo Enos from Kenya. He's a professor of agriculture, Harvard, Canada, where else am I forgetting, Kenya. Yeah. And he's the one who started the master agriculture master program in Somaliland some 10, 12 years ago. Worked with the UN FAO, and now he's here to train, to give his knowledge and his wealth of experience to our young people. We have Professor Okolo, we have Professor Hubert in Maraikan, Canada, United Nations, and he has been a master in the field of agriculture. He has been a professor, he has been a professor, he has been a professor, and he has been a professor, and he has been a professor, and he has been a professor. He has been a professor, and he has been a professor, and he has been a professor. أنا أركل أودك أنا ويش هو كان لكن سماشي المياله وأنا أباهن دليل يردنا أباهن مستقبل كنا أباهن نورشنا أباهن عن تم ملك هلا لقى كنا أونكو نوران مين واحد مركب سوق هذا يوكل يكون نوران مين وحاسة يقولك هسي له نسيه أنتي هل أنت بيرتن أوكلية أي مجال دن قوتن له أوين أنا كش غي سنين مركا كوداي ضدك علم ده ده كسو جاري إيه بروفيسورين تا إيش عاملين تا إنه كنا شامعين نقطة أو نقطة مال قبيل بات كنا قناة سا وحبرت هادو كسي سو هو يدا نقوم سي سبليل شقيستا Spend the next couple minutes with Mom and Ilias while they geek over this strategical transformation of the land. Dr. Okolo had mentioned that this land once fed 0.8 of a goat. And now we're looking at 10 goats can be fed with the transformation that has happened here today. The Edna Adden University Faculty of Agriculture and Veterinarian offers a Bachelor's of Agriculture and a Bachelor of Veterinarian. Both are four-year bachelor programs, both have theory and practical sessions, and both offer degrees that will be taught by teachers who are experts in the field. Remember when I said, uh, leave the good manure and the grass will grow? Mm -hmm. And so they would pack together. When they're packed together like this, 
what happens in their mind is that they switch the way they eat. They eat non-selectively. So they don't pick and choose. They're not like picky, you know, they just eat everything. Something green? One anaya, you know? Like the makibrio. They they don't they don't choose. So if you can see this is a night area, you can see they ate the trees, they ate everything. Everything went down, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of manure and there's a lot of dung. A lot of droppings, urine, and you can see they, they, they had great impact on the land. And then what happens, we see this with the wild herds, is that they don't come back before a year. Like 10 to 16, 18 months, it depends. They usually follow the rains. And so what we do is that we do the same. Like we have the Jilel here in Somaliland, which is usually five and a half, six months. This year was seven and a half months, was a drought. You know, our neighbors lost 50 to 80% of their livestock. But because we are on a 12 month rotation, we don't know about the drought. The drought didn't affect us. You'll see like we, we have a bunch of lambs now. All our mothers are lambing on green grass. We're gonna double the size of our herd in comparison with losing 80%, you know? So there, there's a difference in, and we're trying to imitate these herds of, of herbivores. You see that, that, that's where they were not there. So this looks almost terrible, right? It's like, what yeah. did you do to the land? Yeah. <laughs> but somehow this is how you fix the land. Because now we're not going to come back here. We're going to have the dead rain. We're going to have the goo rain. And then maybe the karam or the dead rain next year. And then we'll come back. And this will grow. No, this oh, will yeah. be this high. This will be this Plus high. The dropping will grow new, new grass. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So when we come back, the grass is going to be this high. So we're just going to walk down there and I'll show you that there looked like this just a year ago. Big difference, huge difference. All we need is a little bit of care, a lot of care actually. A bit of a, maybe a nose plug because it smells like manure. But this is a huge improvement for our land if we can follow structures like this and learn from the Edna Adda University. I have not been able to play in a field of grass in forever. Can you see this? Imagine. Egg dogen. Ball egg dogen. I'm used to all the kafsanaya. There's no all the kafsanaya here, guys. Did you do now that you see the grass on this land? No, no, this is natural grass. The way it should be. Yeah. We didn't plant anything. Nothing we didn't. Was. Didn't no it. chemicals, no fertilizers, no compost, nothing. This is just animal management. And it's, it's by design. We tried to do something extremely simple that others can replicate. Like, we could bring, you know, a bunch of cover crops and plant them and sell them. But then the neighbors will see like, oh, you got this because you had all these inputs. Yeah, all the money you brought it. <laughs> no, exactly. Like, this is extremely low cost. It's exactly like our neighbors, yeah. just the management is different. So you could think, you know, ours looks like this and that one looks like that because we have less animals. We actually have about 20 times more animals per hectare than our neighbors because they they are grazing this whole catchment and the whole catchment has maybe 2,000 animals right and that's about five to ten thousand hectares it depends on where the catchment stops but them, 2,000 animals on this amount of land is 20 times less animals than we have on our amount of land see it in real life on our land like yeah. you see this online you can research about it mom and i have youtubed a million episodes but to walk in it yourself that's amazing mashallah and it's not it's not finished like that if you if you come down okay. if you can if you come in between the grasses you can still see some capped soils right like it's you still have this black algae and and it's but it's being covered with seeds so the seed is it's been dropping yeah a bunch of seeds so this is going to grow it's going to break this crust 
And, and if you just think of rainfall, so if we have 370 millimeters of rain here in Somaliland, um, on the average land, I think there's what, 80 to 90% of runoff. Yeah. That means that you only have 10% of the water that falls that goes into the land. So instead of having 370 millimeters of effective rainfall, you only have like 30 to 40 millimeters of rainfall. Not only that, that That's 80% effective. carries with it soil. And it, and it takes the soil away, it takes the organic matter away. But imagine a big rain that falls onto this posture here. It will leave. It's, it's not going to go, yeah. it's going to go in. It's going to go to the ground. Exactly, so you can even multiply by nine the amount of rain that the land has just by keeping it covered. Like there's so many beautiful ecological processes that are being restored and they compound on each other year after year. It's going to become better and better. Like right now you see the tallest one maybe is like waist high, maybe like a meter high. I mean, we had, there's a bush over there that's, that's closed. The grasses are two meters high inside the bush. I don't know if it'll come back to two meters, but hey, you know, it's, I, I think it's possible. The students have got positive learning. Something which if they take away, the, the society is going to benefit a lot. Look at what is going on here. Mm. The students who come to learn here, they'll come, come out with value for money. I agree a hundred percent, you know, like a lot of people think agriculture is I'm going to be a rare me, you know, I'm going to be a, a farmer with animals, but I think it's a really strategic um, investment in yourself if you want to learn and you want to be part of the development of Somaliland over the next decades. I think agriculture is really, really um, a strategic investment. You know, it's like, why not grow this stuff here and sell it here instead of sending all this money to Ethiopia? I mean, God bless Ethiopia, but you know, why not? Why not grow it here and and produce it here and then the money stays in Somaliland? And even like, again, on the macroeconomic level, I think it's very strategic to study agriculture. I've seen very many papers written about fodder in this country. And they're talking of importing fodder grass from uh, Sudan grass, they import Nepal grass, or all sorts of grasses from neighboring countries. We have it here, naturally. It does not require any importation. As Elias says, all you need is management. And this is what we wanted to train our students to pick up. Good management. Yeah. I don't know, I've heard you and Grandma yeah. say it. <laughs> <laughs> What's the Kaliginole? So this is a Kaliginole. It's basically um, uh, an annual leafy forb. Um, it's part of the ecological or the biological transitions. So if you come here, you can see here. Um, yeah. This was completely bare ground here. So last year this was completely bare, um, but now we went from bare to mostly Caliginole. So it's an annual grass, or annual fork, which is not ideal, but we will graze it down. And the, my, my, my expectation is that we go from bare ground as a first step to annual grasses and annual forbs to then perennial grasses like this. Um, so it's these transitions that, that take time. And every time we graze, we make the land better. So in nature, you have the libah, you know, that's the lion that's, that's keeping the animals tight together because that's where they're safe. Um, but in our system, we are the predators. So we, so in the West or in South Africa, or you know, you use electric fencing for this because it's lightweight and things. And we are building, we're building a local version of, uh, of some technologies. And in a couple months, you probably can come, come again and see it. But what we've used is cages to keep that density together so that they take everything down. The Kaligi if you leave the animals, they won't eat the Kaliginole, for instance, or the Balambale. But we force them to eat them. And then everything goes down and then everything has the equal chance to come back up and grow together. We call this ultra high density, non-selective grazing. So you've already moved them three times this morning? Yeah, yeah. So we put them here first and then here. to see but it's destructive to the land and this sometimes for us as humans we do 
this anthropomorphism we put ourselves I don't want to be in a cage so the animal doesn't want to be in a cage I don't want to be so tight together so the animal doesn't either but that's not like we are herd animals so being tight together is their natural is their natural way of being <laughs> Brazil they can still poop and, and, and give all the nafaq to the land. Uh, so, so this here is a, this is our roll out. They lay and then they, the, the eggs just come in the gutter here. We just finished building this. We, we had it without, without the rollout system. You guys, you guys made this? Yeah, we made this. Like totally local to Mali. Three different lahamlid. I struggle with that word, but you nailed it. That was the same in Arabic. We made a few. Uh, there's, a, there's a few things we're going to do different next time. Uh, one of them is get them at one day old. Or actually, we're actually gonna. This is called a Bovon's brown breed. Um, it's the kind of like the Ferrari of uh, egg laying chickens. Um, they're typical industrial chickens. We're gonna go about to those trees and then we're gonna finish the pastures under those trees and then we're moving to the other side of the farm. So we have a, we have a 12 month, we're actually more on a 14 15 month grazing plan now. Our rotation. Like we have way more grass than last year, so we also have double the amount of animals. Well, if you aren't impressed by that type of farmland management, I don't know what else there is to impress you. But now we make our way to farm number two, where there is absolutely no shortage of liman. We have grapefruit. In fact, uh, you better look around and see. Yes. This is a typical farm, which is showing that this land is rich in agriculture. If you look at how the, 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 the citrus crops are growing here and the fruits they are carrying, it tells a lot of stories. And you see the soil, the sun, 
very good for the crops here. All we need is water and we are managing that water. The only things which are lacking here, number one is water and the human resource. That is why we, uh, we started the university, the Faculty of Agriculture, so that we can develop the human capacity to be able to do this kind of thing we are seeing here. If you just walk one centimeter out of this crop, you'll find that the neighbor doesn't have anything growing like this. In fact, I don't need to tell you, you just need to walk. You <laughs> see it. Yeah. <laughs> twice as big. You see, it's red inside. This tree is my favorite. Dirsi Baira, what generous. Grapefruit normally has good sugar. Ah, Mesh doesn't need sugar. No. Mm -mm. You cannot not like. <laughs> you cannot not like. Mm. <laughs> you cannot not like. Mm. <laughs> you cannot not like. Mm. <laughs> you cannot not like. 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 You cannot من هقف كل لوب أول سدة بقولوا جيد أو قاصة بيرة سدة أفر سنود نسجة نحوب بهي وحال لك يا نمك حمر بال لك يا نبم بالما وقت هاي نوب بحر تين أنا كمعان معان تي وقتها ولو يريرت هاي لا برد لا برد لا أخري وحال نكبو حنا إسكرهجو أي أنا مركي إنه ما دون نكبو حنا وين نكبو حسدا دون ما كان نسوي علنا وحنا كس كشرنا دور بغلو جوان أيام كشرنا أنت بحيس ويبدأ يرتع بيرتنو الحمد لله وثاب بحيس هلا من درين فيه من درين وياي بخير بيا ونعكسن هشوف روب ونعكسن هشوف ما شاء الله جد والبواد يخس في ينجو still has it grows it grows very big still very hard but it's, it's also a good one but it's still got a few months to go and what happened oh,
So we're headed to go check out the water supplies, which there's two methods. One is pumped by solar, one by fuel. But look at all the goodies we got so far. <laughs> so my line custom, if you go to bed, you won't leave empty handed. The tank has come. The tank has come. They fill it up. Yeah. Because okay. this water is wholesome. Okay. It's very healthy. It's clean. No salt in it. Clean. You can drink it as it is. Okay. A dry riverbed. The dry riverbed. Let's go see. <laughs> Mom wants to go right in. <laughs> you aren't learning until you're on the ground, right? Yeah. It's really I have to see it. <laughs> I don't know guys, I might enroll in this agriculture course, four year program, um, but yeah, just to be in your land and enjoying your own nature and knowing that what you learn is going to benefit, it's going to directly benefit our land. Now off to farm number three, where Dr. Edna and Dr. Okolo spread more wealth in the form of knowledge. These are onions. These are very young. We eat the green onions. They have another two months or so, a month and something. A month, month or so. In a month's time to be big like this. Yes, these are peanuts. Yeah, there's still peanuts. Yeah, there's peanuts growing. We have planted a lot of things. Those are pumpkins. That's what it was. Okay, I was over there. It looked like watermelon, but it turns out. Uh, watermelon are like them, but watermelon we were planted across. Ah, uh, okay. They're still just coming on. All of this is now guava. These are guavas, okay. Yes. I'm curious what's going on here. Hi, Derek. Welcome. Yes. My name is Derek Ongeri. Uh, I am from manager here. So currently this is what we have in the field. This is a uh, tomato. Uh, this is also eggplant. Another name Rinjos. The other side is a uh, cabbage. So currently that's, this is what we have in the farm. So maybe within two, three weeks we are going to transplant to the main field whereby we are going to grow them. So 
I think you have seen this. Uh, we have tried to improvise as a shade. This is a polythene and it's a white in color. So we have put it in order to reduce the direct, sun, direct sunlight. So once we put it, it can extract its lights but it reduces the, the heat. The other side is uh, we have used that uh, a net because we, we lack we lack polythene, so we have to use a net. And this is a natural shape. So once we have put it, it reduces uh, the direct sunlight. It's a natural shape. Yeah, it's a natural shape.